Hey everybody and welcome to this session on advanced breach detection. My name is Alex Cox. I'm a senior systems engineer with Tripwire and I'm here to show you a demonstration of RAM scraping malware and Tripwire Enterprise. When we put the two together, we can see how this malware behaves, track its actions and artifacts that it leaves behind, and perhaps leave you with a couple good strategies for how to detect this malware in your environment if you happen to be attacked with it someday. Over the years, there have been a number of, uh, let's call them exotic <laughs> theories about um, what a hacker could do to the home user. You know, there's this this great article here from the year 2000 that suggests hackers can turn your home computer into a bomb. And while we haven't seen that very much since the year 2000, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, other sorts of trends. We've seen things like the energy grid being attacked and so on. Um, but really, over the last year and a half, what we've seen the most of is the home user being attacked <laughs> in different ways. They're being attacked through the retail industry, um, through a lot of merchants, uh, because you know these days we buy everything with credit cards and so you know you find that a lot of these you know organized cybercrime groups are are taking advantage of this and 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 by attacking the retail industry harvesting vast amounts of you know, credit card numbers and personal information when they're successful. I don't need to go through the list of all the different vendors and retailers that have been hacked over the years. Uh, it, it's, it's extensive and we, and we know that it's been explosive lately. Um, in terms of explosive hacking, I have something here that you may find as an interesting resource. Um, if you check this out at map.ipviking.com, uh, you can tap into Norse's real-time stream of attack intelligence. Um, these are real attacks that are happening right now, uh, all being fed to us through Norse. Uh, and this just goes to show, and I bring this up, because there are are constantly attacks flying over the internet, attacking between different nations, in, you know, inter inter internationally, but also domestically. Um, these attacks are ceaseless and they're constant, and so we really need to have better defenses in all all industries these days because of this 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 detail, right? Um, so this is a great resource for you is map.ipviking.com. Another one of my favorites actually is uh, this this site, uh, Information is Beautiful. Uh, they have a great chart uh, that illustrates the different breaches that you've seen uh, in the, the, the recent past. And, and it kind of breaks them down and you know in different ways like by the number of records that we've seen stolen or the data sensitivity of those records. Um, and, and I show you this and, and uh, connect you with this resource because I think this is very interesting. You know, whatever industry you're in, you can go in here and you can click. Like, let's say um, you're you're in uh, you know in a f the finance side of things, you can take a look at that and investigate each one of these breaches by clicking on them to read a little bit more. Uh, but if you take a look at these, uh, retail is huge, right? It's it's if you go back over the last few years, that in terms of records and damage, there's definitely been you know, a, a big trend there, and they've, they've been a significant portion of this. So we're going to focus a little bit on um, retail breach detection in this uh, demonstration. Jump back into my slides here. Okay, so taking a look at this, um, you know, if you look at a breach in terms of, you know, how it originates, uh, you know, how it matures and how it's completed. Uh, there are various steps that an attacker will take, uh, starting with reconnaissance and enumeration, right? So as an attacker is breaking into an environment, you know, they, they're doing reconnaissance, they're getting information off, let's say Google is a great example, Shodan, and there's lots of different techniques that they have freely available to them to grab information about your organization, perhaps social engineering as well. And then there are a number of different ways, once they have information about your environment, that you can be attacked, of course. You know, we've seen a bunch of RDP exploits. Uh, we've seen, you know, phishing, social engineering, uh, coming in through a business partner. We saw that in several major breaches last year uh, and the year before it, actually. Um, and simply hacking known vulnerabilities, very, very common. Uh, once th that stage is complete uh, and an attacker is breaking further into your environment, uh, you know, they, they have to pivot. They have to get inside 
uh, not just the, the perimeter defenses, but also find the data that they're looking for. So they'll start to scan the internal network and figure out how to I infiltrate and pivot between the different systems. Uh, from there, um, they're going to identify critical assets and attempt to attack them. When we're talking about retail, um, there's been a lot of different areas that have been attacked. Point of sale systems are extremely common lately. If you look at the different major breaches, uh, you know, point of sale systems are processing credit cards all the time, and some of the very largest breaches have involved. Uh, you know, basically people pulling credit card numbers off of these systems in massive quantities. Uh, and taking that information, maybe feeding it back to a remote server uh, where they can then, you know, harvest the information and exfiltrate it out to their drop site. Uh, this is a surprisingly common pattern. Uh, going back to, you know, 2013, uh, you know, looking at you know, Target, we saw a similar, um, you know, piece of malware that hit Target, hit many other organizations, uh, and, uh, you know, going forward, like Sally Beauty, Nima Marcus, uh, it, the family was known as uh, Black POS or Captoxa, and since then, you've seen other strains come out, like Back Off and other sorts of types of malware. Uh, there, there were just so many different strains out there, but when you boil it down, they're all using very similar techniques, or a combination of these techniques. Uh, and one of those techniques we're going to look at today is memory scraping. Uh, so before we get into how that piece works, um, what can we do when we're looking at this sort of mind map of how an attacker you know, gets into our organization and uh, tries to, to take our information? What can we do to prevent these different um, stages from uh, you know, happening to us? So if you look at stage one, it's if you want to prevent someone from getting into your environment and learning a lot about it very quickly, uh, your system's hardening is super important. So is and, and so is um, you know scanning for vulnerabilities and remediating, the, remediating those vulnerabilities. Um, those uh, two pieces are actually useful in the next stage where the attacker is trying to you know break in via exploits and so on. Because you know if they don't have vulnerabilities to use against you, uh, if uh, you know you have strong internal controls that help you protect against, say, remote desktop exploits, phishing, and, and uh, if you have strong control of your access in your environment, then, then you have a lot of chances to prevent them from digging further in. Uh, but when you get down to that last level that we were talking about, when you get down to the point of sale system or the servers that are talking to your, your, uh, your stores and your uh, you know, different retail systems there, uh, really the key here is monitoring those systems, watching them like a hawk. Um, understanding you know, what's going on and really uh, you know, reacting quickly to unexpected behaviors or indications of compromise. So zeroing in a little bit more deeply here, if, if we look at point of sale weak points, uh, there are a number of different techniques that can be used on these point of sale systems. We've seen attackers stealing information over the network We've seen attackers scanning those point of sale systems for, say, credit card numbers that are that are stored in in plain text. Kind of a big no-no, but still happens all the time. Uh, and really, in the last year and a half, we've seen a tremendous amount of memory scraping. Uh, RAM scraping or memory scraping is basically a technique that allows malware to look at information that's flying through memory in, in milliseconds and see if any of that information has credit card numbers or anything sensitive that the attacker may want to pull out of there. So what happens on a point of sale system is when somebody goes to swipe a credit card at the point of sale system, uh, the information, everything needed to process a transaction with your card is flashing through memory uh, in that point of sale system. Now, uh, you know, modern vendors are, are much better at not writing these credit card details to disk, which um, has been a great prevention strategy and, and defense strategy until recently, where attackers have sped up and they're and they're they don't need to look at the disk. They look at memory like this, and they, and they pull out these patterns that resemble credit cards. We're going to play with uh, a academic set of malware today that actually illustrates how all this is done and, and what it looks like from an attacker's point of view. Uh, but that's the basics, right? It's it's stealing these credit cards right out of memory, right when the card is swiped in the instant. Uh, 
Um, typically, as was the case in many of these different uh, you know breaches, uh, you've you've seen uh, basically these these credit card numbers extracted and pulled out into a file. So um, this is like a depot to save all these credit card numbers up so that they can be exfiltrated later to a uh, remote system. So now for the fun part, let's jump into the demo. Uh, I've got an environment here that I have. Let's see, VMware workstation here. Yep. So basically, I have a virtual machine here that is being watched by Tripwire Enterprise. Um, so imagine with me, if you will, here uh, that this is a point of sale system. And the attacker has moved on to this point of sale system, and they have their memory scraping toolkit that they'd like to use. Uh, so if I take this credit card scraper here and copy that, I'm about to drop that onto the system. Now, for your information here, in the background here, I have a Tripwire Enterprise window that's watching changes and for for changes in real time here. Uh, and so when the attacker drops their little payload on the system and maybe they extract that that payload this is something that Tripwire Enterprise has always been very good at catching um, who is changing what when and where is a specialty of Tripwire Enterprise so if we come back into this product and we refresh the screen here uh, basically what we're going to see is that uh, that file was dropped onto the system and uh, that was extracted this is going to create a number of different artifacts because this is a fairly large uh, toolkit. Now if we go and take a look at this, um, there are roughly 90 changes. I'll zoom in a little mm -hmm. bit so you can see better. Uh, there are roughly 90 changes that were affected uh, or that were <laughs> created by uh, this extraction. If I take a look at that inside Tripwire Enterprise, as you may have expected, you can see who is making these changes. Uh, what files they're changing, in this case many changes under this credit, scar credit card scrapers directory, um, when the changes are taking place and of course where. Now uh, in addition uh, we can go and see things like um, if we were to take a look at this and see this zip file maybe jump to a certain point in time for that file we can see things like the application that makes a change as well. So if I pop this out I can see that this file was moved by hand through explorer.exe. But it can be interesting if you see someone downloading it through Firefox or, or um, perhaps if artifacts are being created by a malware uh, or a piece of malware, a malicious executable, um, this will identify that there as well. So really, a lot of the tools that we've had all along are able to catch this very handily when, when you see a new exploit package get popped on here. Uh, this does not require signatures because we're watching systems for all changes that are happening that are ha all changes that are happening inside the environment and uh, you know, lining those up against your internal change plans and all kinds of other fun things. Um, but what may be new to you is that we can also do malware detection by partnering with threat intelligence services. Uh, for instance, uh, you know Cisco's Threat Grid. Uh, Palo Alto's Wildfire, Checkpoints, uh, Threat Cloud, uh, Last Line, and, and many others. But what this is doing is when we see an executable being added to a system, we can feed that into our partner uh, in their Threat Intelligence Cloud, and they can come back and tell us, hey, that was malware or not. Uh, this is super neat because as you go into this and we take a look, um, there are. Um, uh, really advanced benefits to this. It, if you think of this as like a antivirus, right? An antivirus is sitting on the systems waiting for uh, attacks that it knows based on signatures. But the problem has been over the last really, oh yeah, gosh, going on like five years now, we've seen a lot of polymorphic malware, just tons and tons of it. And AV is just having a, a lot of trouble keeping up with it because it doesn't have the signatures to adapt. Um, however, with these new threat intelligence services, they're able to detonate this malware in a virtual machine and, and watch its behavior and see, hey, what is it doing? What, what types of activities or behaviors does it expose? Does it create any artifacts that, that I know to be malicious? Uh, and based on all of these things, uh, it helps us identify really quickly if we have a problem on our hands or not. 
So if you can catch someone dropping malware onto your systems, there's no doubt that you'll be able to you know, react more quickly and um, you'll have better information at your fingertips or in your email uh, right as that happens. So if I go back into here, um, we can see that, th yeah, there are about 90 some changes, uh, but through integration with our threat intelligence partner, uh, we know which three, three uh, of these files actually contain a malicious payload. Uh, very cool stuff, very useful. But let's take a step back and continue our attack. So back from the back on that sort of hacker's point of view, uh, we're on a point of sale system, and, and we'd we'd want to maybe steal some credit cards from memory. Uh, to simulate credit cards flowing through memory, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this notepad here, and I have this little $20 credit card swiper I found online, and um, I can feed into it this expired credit card. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> and uh, basically, this credit card is now in memory. I haven't saved it to a file or anything. It's, it's just in memory. Uh, however, uh, this toolkit that I downloaded is designed to look for just this sort of thing. By the way, this toolkit also includes a disk scraper, a network scraper, and a memory scraper, the points we made earlier. Um, and uh, for reference, this, uh, this toolkit comes from the, uh, the book Hacking Point of Sale. It's a great book, highly recommend it. And um, it, it, uh, you know, this is uh, some academic malware created by Slava Gamsen, the author of Hacking Point of Sale. Uh, so anyways, uh, I digress. Uh, if I click uh, Memory Scraper here, uh, this is an executable that will allow me to, s to scrape processes in memory. I have Notepad here as one, as an option, uh, and the malware here is, is jumping through memory, and in five places in memory it found evidence of credit cards and saved those credit card numbers to a file, important point that we'll come back to later. Um, but uh, this is the kind of data that it sees if we take a look in that file. Um, you know, it sees things like credit card numbers, track one, track two data, uh, and you know, all that information necessary to process the credit card uh, is sitting there in memory. So never wrote it to a file, but yet this malware was able to pull that out, no problem. So let's take a look back at uh, Tripwire Enterprise. If I go back over here, Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to our website. I'm going to the local system, and I'm logging in as me. So if I go back to my little dashboard here and take a look at this, it will have some new information for us. So you can see, yes, it's, we definitely saw that there were a bunch of changes. We narrowed it down, found the needles in the haystack by integrating with our partner. Uh, but also, uh, Tripwire Enterprise here is also looking inside the contents of these files that are created, and if it discovers any loose credit card data through pattern matching, uh, it can then say, hey, you've got a problem here too. Uh, this happens on accident. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different organizations that bring us in just to help them find loose credit card data, something that we can definitely help with in addition to you know, a lot of the different services that we offer. But um, with this piece here, we're doing integrity monitoring, and integrity monitoring has discovered that a file was created with loose credit card information, and here it is. Uh, so pointing us at the, uh, the depot that the malware was creating. And if you look back and you look at back at like uh, you know like Captox, uh, Black POS, uh, this malware was doing this. It was doing the same thing. It was it was piling on these lines, line after line of uh, credit card information into files inside the the System 32 directory. Um, something that Tripwire Enterprise is very good at catching. So as you can see, you know, as, as we go through a regular attack and we apply Tripwire Enterprise, um, there are many artifacts that are created. Even though th th it's not looking at credit cards that are sitting in files, uh, even though the, the malware is not doing that, uh, it's very advanced, it's looking at things in memory, it still leaves a trace in this case. In the case of the many different uh, you know, breaches that we've seen that, that 
all the different investigations and research I've done, in most cases, there's some piece of evidence left by the malware. You know, the, the executables that are running it, libraries that, that, that support it, um, listening ports, port-to-port -port communication. That's stuff that we can detect changes on, too. So there are a lot of different things that you can detect just by watching for change on these assets and also doing regular scans of those assets to make sure that they don't contain any um, sensitive information that um, is not properly locked down. Um, finally, if we want to take a look at this uh, in a more, you know, an approach, it's more about remediation, right? If we want to go through our desktop here, this is where I drop those files. And if we want to go in and take a look at credit cards, scrapers, and if I go into this bin directory, that's where all the real good stuff is. Uh, <laughs> good by varying definitions. Uh, if we go and take a look at this, uh, let me close that. <laughs> um, then we have these different, you know, pieces of malware that are there. Uh, now, if I'd like, if I'd like to go in here inside Tripwire Enterprise, I look at my, you know, pieces of malware that have been detected, and uh, maybe find those changes, those three changes. I can take action on these different items that have been added. Now, uh, if malware is being dropped into your environment, one of the things that's really going to matter is you know detection speed, but also remediation speed, right? You're being able to jump onto that system and take care of it right away. Uh, it is possible to create an action to clean up the malware. So, for example, if I run my uh, threat remediation actions. Here, uh, if, I, if I'd like to delete these files from the system, uh, that's something that I can fire off as a quick remediation step. And you see they just disappeared from over here. Uh, Tripwire is still keeping track of those. It's, even though the files have come and gone, it's going to let us know, Tripwire Enterprise will let us know that uh, these files were here at one point in time, which, which is really helpful because sometimes attackers, well, in most cases, attackers will try to uh, cover their tracks. Uh, so another fun thing here too is if we wanted to go and jump over to the let me go here uh, if we want to go over here to the loose credit card data we could do the same sort of thing over here if I jump back I can clean up that loose credit card data you know and there's all kinds of different uh, levels that you can have role-based access control this is the ability to fire off commands on everybody's systems is probably not um, something you grant to everyone right uh, but the, the point is if if uh, if need be and with proper access uh, you can jump in here and clean up those files and, and get rid of that um, you know malicious uh, code and uh, malicious artifacts so um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation today. I, I, it really just goes to show that you know some of the same old tricks that we've had all along, uh, not only are they getting better, but they're really good at catching these advanced attacks. Surprisingly good, Adam. So I'd encourage you, as you're building your defense and depth strategy, to take a really good look at integrity monitoring, um, it, especially when you line this data up against your change plans uh, and see you know, what's coming in outside of bounds. It can be really illuminating and, and help you protect your systems. Uh, but that said, uh, that's, that's my presentation for today here. Uh, and I want to thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the, uh, the rest of the seminars. Thanks again, and have a great day.